Hey y'all. So I wanted to do a genetic path cutting reading for the collective. I just feel like this might be a really good time for folks to get some insight as it relates to your ascension path. Um, I am gonna be utilizing this deck, this DIY deck that I have channeled and created. Look at this y'all, this is a lot of cards, okay. Um, I have shared my philosophy as it relates to tarot in some other messages, but I definitely think when you're on the ascension path, you get to a point where you start transcending tarot. Um, and just so y'all know, number one, I'm not the best shuffler. I'm not going to be doing all this extra stuff with shuffling, which I've never been able to do the whole shuffle thing. Okay. So for all those folks who have issues with shuffling that don't mean you're not intuitive okay so what I'm doing for this reading before I get into it because the deck is so huge I am actually shuffling in threes okay so for folks who are uh, a part of the genetic path cutting tier on patreon uh, patreon which I've actually halted for now because I'm reimagining how I'm sharing this information with the collective I'm down to do readings for folks, and I'm, I'm, that's why I'm opening it up now for collective readings, but I'm actually more interested in working with folks on uh, teaching them the framework so that y'all can do your own readings, okay? Um, so for folks who don't know, genetic path cutting is based upon some of the following tenets. This is just one of them. So first it's divination, and we utilize over uh, 300 index cards and this is a growing oracle deck so i always tell folks that i work with that when you create your own deck I, I have people create their own decks i just think that we need to get out of the whole third eye manipulation within the spiritual community sometimes we give our power away by having other people see for us okay and having this be a diy deck it starts to like take uh, your power back right because you're infusing your energy into these cards and all that kind of stuff okay so um i definitely wanted to make that note for y'all that you know there's some work that's required i'm a capricorn i'm very saturnian okay i guess that's where my sat my saturn stuff comes out right i like that it's an evolving deck i like that people can add their own cards right because that's the thing, genetic path cutting is very, very personal. You are essentially rectifying uh, different holes and gaps within your ancestral legacy. There are records that you need to collect and retrieve. Uh, a lot of times there's been manipulations to your ancestral records that you need to rectify. That's why note taking is very, very important. Um, as it relates to this so um, and because you are basically kind of keeping record of things and until you like really get into the astral or not even the astral but the unconscious and you know you get super super advanced with this stuff writing is like writing things down and then going back and referencing a reading that you did or notes that you took on a particular thing is going to really be your best friend so one of the first things related to the genetic path cutting framework that I'm going to share with y'all today are the cards, but this is not the only part of the framework. And that's another reason why I have paused the Patreon offering on genetic path cutting, because when I started that offering, we were kind of focusing in on the readings and that's just um, well, the readings and the meditations, but there's a lot more. So we do readings. We also do uh, transformative meditations or shamanic meditations where you're going into your Akashic records and you're seeing what kind of karmic records need to be uh, healed, rectified, that sort of thing. You're going into parallel lives, all that kind of stuff. And you'll be able to get a reading right from the deck, see what's coming up. I always like to ask very 3D questions to the genetic path cutting deck and usually you'll get a very uh multi-dimensional answer but the idea is you heal things multi-dimensionally and it makes your third dimensional life easier so one thing i uh, i get a lot from folks is like oh my gosh this takes so much time like yeah it's just really time consuming and i totally get that that's why i'm on this whole work life liberation kick y'all you know how i've been talking about work life liberation 
wrote a book called The Grind Culture Detox, really showing people how to get off of the toxic ham hamster wheel of productivity, reclaim your power from the work pyramid so that you have more time to do this stuff, all right? You're able to be nourished and sustained in your life towards healing, all right? So for folks who are saying, yeah, this takes too much time, then it might mean that you might need to liberate your time a bit more because there should be a lot of ease and flow in your day so that you're able to do these things. And this is your lifestyle, all right? So if you wanna learn more about that, then click on the links below. One of the offerings I'm, I'm offering right now is a work-life liberation reading. If you are like in that in-between point where you're like, you're ready to take that quantum leap, but you, and you know, maybe you're working a job you don't like or something like that, but you just kind of need some guidance with that. I'll work with you through the genetic path cutting deck as well as your astrology chart. Um, and we'll do some higher um, higher self channeling, your higher self channeling to, to see what, uh, what can support you with liberating your work life, what soul contracts you need to work on revoking a lot of times you got to revoke soul contracts you might have karma to wrap up with that particular employer that you're trying to step out of that's why sometimes it feels hard to leave certain places because there's still this karmic tie there so we do that um, i also provide you uh, with the book the grind culture detox and also a subliminal for work-life liberation with affirmation so it's a whole kind of you know care package i call it the work-life liberation care package so if you're interested in that click on the link below but let's get into genetic path cutting and this is just one section or segment of it the question that i'm going to ask is well first of all i'm going to ground and i'm going to share with you just kind of how i energetically prepare for these readings so I get mindful, put my feet flat on the ground, connect with my heart space, focus in on gratitude, providing an energetic thank you to be a vessel at this time to support with the liberation of my ancestors and the ancestry of the collective, knowing that we heal in community, we heal in communion with one another. I connect with the consciousness of the earth, the ascending planet earth at this time, and I call upon earth to channel through this reading. I call upon my Red Nation's ancestors, as well as the Red Nation's ancestors of anybody who clicks onto this, who knows that this message is specifically tailored for them. I'm channeling a collective reading at this time, so I'm channeling in the energy of the collective of Red Nation's ancestors who are supporting us with our ascension path at this time. And I call upon my I am presence, my creator soul, my dragon soul, and anybody who's watching this video at this time, calling their higher selves and calling their creator souls and calling their dragon souls. And to make sure that the message that is received today is just what the collective needs to support with the next phase of their ascension path. And so it is. Okay, so that's my my grounding thing I like to do. Uh, so now what I do is I'm going to pull cards. So let's see what um, what does the collective need to know at this time about their ascension path? We'll keep it there. What does the collective need to know at this time about their ascension path? So I just kind of like I'm the sort of reader I like cards to just fall out, y'all. I need things to be real. Like, I need it to be real, like, spelled out for me. Like, let me know that you want me you want me to have these cards. And I choose a lot of cards um, because I like the cards to tell a whole story. Okay? So, I'm going to show you look at these cards. Okay. So, I'm going to read out each card that I get. And then um, I'm going to put it down. So, it says, alchemize it. Call in resources. Media Pyramid, Temple of Recasting, Personality Entity, Jesus, Abundance Karma, Tibetan, Non-Physical, Stomach, Tao, 
you are casting seduction veils, AI software, God, God is all that is, court of attachment, Mahatma planes, fear, fearless, AI software like went right next to me, so, mm -hmm. brainstem, nervous system, cellular trauma, meridians, hilarion, swapped parallel life, monadic soul family, control controlled, collapse timeline, veils of illusion, anu, prestige pyramid, synergy, Asia, and Central America. So now I know first a lot of folks, y'all are like, what is that? Like, there's a lot probably that you're like, what, what is that? You know, um, for some folks who have been rocking with me via Patreon or has already like purchased like, an Ascension reading, uh, I kind of break it down for y'all. Y'all know I get really in depth with my, uh, with my, my recorded readings that I give y'all. So y'all might kind of know if y'all are watching this, you, you probably know. So what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to help it make a bit more sense by essentially um, kind of organizing things, but based upon themes. So the first theme that I see is place. So it looks like there's some karma related to Asia and Central America, which the collective could be utilizing, um, could be healing at this time, okay? So when I think about Central America, I actually see a lot of connections with like African Americans. You know, there's a lot of research and a lot of stuff coming out around how um, African Americans might not be directly from Africa, that there may have been more black people in Central America and that sort of thing. There's a lot of research coming out about that. Uh, that's something I've been finding on my journey is like my genetic path cutting journeys have been calling me to Central America totally didn't know that that was going to be a thing i was like total like afrocentrism all that kind of stuff you know studied african-american studies and like literally african-american studies there was no central america talk uh when i was uh, studying it you know so it was kind of new for me when my ancestors showed me that and when i actually was able to visit some of these lands i was able to really connect with there's this interesting tie between Africa and Central America. I'm still figuring it out. It's still being revealed to me. But, you know, if that's clicking with you at all, check check into Central America and read on that. And then Asia. Asia um, is pretty interesting, too, because there's also some ties as it relates to Alpha Centauri or the reptilians as it relates to Asia. I also got, oh, I also got Tibetan. So that's very connected to Asia as well. And there's some, there have been, there's been some DNA, uh, you know, first of all, all humans, we all have mixed DNA. There's nobody who's quote unquote pure blood here or very few. Okay. Um, most people, and you might, the only person, like the only people who might be pure, pure blood supposedly would be these guys, the Anu, maybe. Okay, but even them, they've mixed and they've had to mix. Everybody's mixed on this planet. And that's actually a lot of the karma that we're doing because some, some of us have mixed with non-resonant DNA. Okay, and so for example, Alpha Centauri um, is kind of connected to the reptilians and that sort of thing. And there are some ties as it relates to genetic mixing, as it relates to the reptilians with um, folks of the Tibetan root race. So then that, that's some karma. So if you have any um, ancestry within the Tibetan root race, that might be something. If you're, you're getting called to like information as it relates to re the reptilians, consider this from, uh, from, from the standpoint, you know, and, and, you know, don't take what I, what resonates, leave the rest, obviously, right? Like you are the key to your ascension path. But if you're interested in learning more about this, you can always go on the Aligning with Earth website to learn more about Alpha Centauri. There's a lot of soul contracts, a lot of karma to heal with them. 
uh, so that we can reclaim our energy and our chi so, um, so that we can ascend because that has been a planet that's been very vampiric with the human race, okay? All right, so those are the three kind of like place-based uh, kind of cards. Now, bloodline card would be Tibetan, but I just saw a connection with Asia. Uh, and by the way, this reading is definitely not going to be for everyone. Like, there's a lot of information that goes into these readings. Not everybody's going to be ready for all this, okay? So if it don't resonate, just click off, all right? Um, it's a lot, you know? So um, that's kind of why I moved towards, like, this kind of stuff as opposed to the tarot oracle decks. Because this is just kind of that in-your-face, in-your information. Like, you're ready to clear karma. Like, you've already gotten to that point. You've already done an extensive amount of shadow work and now you're ready for this next level like this is kind of more um this is more in depth i will say so this ain't this message ain't for everyone y'all okay just want to say that if you get triggered it's all right just click off just click off okay so um let's talk about the anu though okay because that's a bloodline as well the anu is short for ananuki all humanity is is clearing this DNA. It's clearing Anunnaki DNA right now. You've got y'all have heard me talk about this quite often. Mm. They basically created, or they didn't create, but they turned humanity into a slave race. You know, through genetic manipulation and a lot of times through AI software. They did a lot to our brains and our consciousness to lower it so that we wouldn't ascend. Kind of like putting different like locks on our consciousness, okay? Because they didn't want us to be in our power because they kind of wanted to dominate and control. They're like a really big power trippy kind of, um, I guess, um, race. I don't know if it's a race or... Um, bloodline i guess very very power trippy okay um they just really lost their connection to source and um and it shows based upon kind of how they've treated humanity so um a lot of us are reclaiming our power from slavery programs all right and the anu we all have stuff to atone for as it relates to the anu everything that we see in our different societies a lot of the pyramid systems um, a lot of that is based upon what the Anunnaki created for us, okay? And um, there's a lot of electrical programming or AI software that we are going to, or psychic machinery that we'll need to dismantle within our consciousness in order to, to uh, retrieve our power and our consciousness, okay? So that is uh, that. Let's see. But at the same time, we can always alchemize it. You know, sometimes the message feels so oppressive. Like you get to the point where you're like, how am I ever gonna overcome this though? You know what I mean? And it can feel like a little depressing sometimes, but you are the alchemist. Always remember that you are the alchemist and you also got the card, God, goddess, all that is. You are God, goddess in form, okay? And if that doesn't like hit home to you all the way, or if there's a but, or a I don't know, that, that kind of came to your mind when I said that, deconstruct that. Where is that coming from? Is that truly you? Is that truly your soul essence speaking, or is it the programming? Okay. And so on that note, I want to pick up some of the thought forms that we got. Okay, let's see. Thought forms, thought forms. Okay, so it looks like we got two thought forms. I thought we got more than that, but okay, two thought forms. Control, controlled, fear, fearless. This control, controlled really definitely, I, I think has to do with the Anunnaki, okay? Uh, they did a lot to control the human consciousness, all right? And their day is over, but we need to kind of, uh, you know, the way healing karma works we live under the universal law of cause and effect. So until we get at the root cause of certain things, we'll keep experiencing the effects of the Anunnaki until we can truly integrate the lessons, okay? That's why we genetic path cut. We don't just do this for ourselves. Um, the folks who tap into this message and this knowledge, you have no choice kind of thing. It's like, you know that this is your purpose 
And if you don't step into this calling, then you're just living on one terrible karmic loop, okay? A lot of y'all have been around on this planet for a really, really, really long time. So that's why you experience like some really tough karmic cycles because you've been here for so long, okay? And so there's just a, a deeper, uh, what I like to say, it's like the greater the light, the greater the shadow. So yeah, you're, you're a, a star seed. Yeah, you're a light worker. But you also have experienced the shadow. You know, just as much as you have the light, you also need to kind of balance it out with the shadow. So if you choose to not embrace this calling of you clearing your, your bloodline of the trauma loops, right? And taking that brave, uh, that, that brave step to transmute and transcend then it's like a miserable life kind of thing it's like really not there's really not a choice you know like and i've had that that thought a lot of times like can i just go back into the matrix like no i can't like it's, it, i literally cannot you know um and so for the folks that this message is for um anything that would get in you, any programming that would get you out of alignment with your mission and your your ultimate truth must be dismantled right so if you think about your the garden you being a gardener and your mind is the garden right you are pruning out all of that icky all those icky weeds and all that kind of stuff okay and on top of that so you know your your any fears that come up i can't do this it's too much i don't have the money i don't have the resources i don't have the time that's that fear fearless thought form okay and you gotta like really think about where is that actually coming from is that you is that actually you or is that is that something else okay because another card that i got personality entities okay so this is the way thought forms work entities are attached to thought forms and they're attached to karma it kind of sucks but they kind of have license to be in your energy field until you transmute the karma that got them there in the first place. They are sticking to something. They're sticking to some kind of polarity-based thought form. And until you face that polarity-based thought form head on, dismantle it, alchemize it, this personality entity is just hanging out in your consciousness, hanging out in your field, hanging out in your nervous system. We got the card nervous system and your brain stem. You think about the brainstem, it can kind of be like that control center, you know, brainstem, nervous system. And so a lot of times the sort of thoughts that we're thinking, are they truly soul infused or are they of, um, you know, of an entity, right? And so that's why it's really important to get at the thought form, target the thought form first that's coming up. And then what you want to do is you want to find the root cause of the karma, okay? And sometimes there are layers to the karma. So for example, fear, fearless. There may have been like hundreds of times where your ancestry experienced fear, right? Where they died in fear. And as you ascend, uh, you're going to transmute like layers of an onion. So you might get to one vibrational bandwidth within your frequency and boom, there's a whole bunch of karma for being in fear or being controlled. And then you're gonna work to alchemize and transmute that. And then you're gonna leap and expand and then you will uh, get into another thought form that you're here to transmute, okay? So it's not always gonna be easy street, but um, if you start working with healing the karma, and getting at some of these thought forms, you're gonna be in a much more greater state of flow, okay? Because you're not gonna also be expecting things to always be perfect all the time, okay? Um, so yeah, uh, fear, fearless, control, controlled, getting rid of that slavery, uh, that slavery consciousness that the Anu left us with. Collapse timeline. There is, There are some timelines, like false timelines that are playing out in your field right now that uh, maybe shouldn't necessarily be there, okay? So one of the cards that we got was Swapped Parallel Life. I haven't really done a lot of content on like public YouTube platform. I've talked about it a bit. I have a meditation on it on Patreon. Definitely check out the Galactic Goddess and the Galactic Black Rose Patreon. Lots and lots of meditations, lots and lots of affirmation, subliminals, a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of resources to support you with this journey. 
Um, you know, there sometimes, unfortunately, there are, just like there's destiny swapping in this realm, sometimes like um, beings who don't want us to ascend because they've been energy harvesting off of us. And this goes beyond the Anunnaki. It's kind of like who the Anunnaki report to. There's a, there's a whole like weird hierarchy with this thing. Um, but a lot of times like they just don't want us to ascend. So they do a lot to pull the wool over our eyes. They've been kind of getting away with it for a really long time. Um, there's a cosmic ordering though that's happening that even transcends Earth and her ascending, which is putting things in alignment. And that is the, the Tao, okay? The Tao is uh, bringing us back into cosmic order and cosmic alignment. A lot of these beings have basically just forgotten that they were connected to source and have been running amok because of their forgetfulness, okay? And they gotta come back home, all right? You know, uh, you know how sometimes people, they, 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 they become a danger to themselves and others around them. That's how far they've gone. It's kind of that same thing on the spiritual realm, okay? So we got some swap parallel lives to reconcile and, and think about. Um, and you know, some of y'all might be like, look, I'm trying to heal on this realm. Now I gotta worry about parallel lives. And what I would just say is, baby steps, you know, when you're ready for it, there are resources available. Um, you know, this is something to tap into a lot of times if you're experiencing a really strong polarity in this realm, then that means the opposite is happening to you in a parallel life. And so if you're able to tap into parallel lives, you can merge that and uh, balance out the polarity. So you're not experiencing of such an extreme polarity in this realm. Okay, it's just something to think about. Um, on the other hand, if you can also sometimes call in certain gifts or certain aspects of a life that you like, that you're living in a parallel realm into the physical. Remember y'all, the physical commands the non-physical, okay? That's the cosmic order of things. I know that a lot of times it feels as though these outside forces are commanding us, but really that's an inversion. The physical commands the non-physical. Always remember that, okay? So non-physical just was talking about that non-physical so let's talk about some of the non-physical beings let's get more into that so for this card we got the mahatma planes which i'm gonna do a whole bunch more content on them the um, um the false god hilarion he's not an ascended master he's a false god um and then veils of illusion came up too okay and then we'll talk about seduction veils, okay? Uh, and that's something we all have to reconcile with, this whole thing around seduction. So let's first talk about the Mahatma planes. The Mahatma planes are essentially an energetic battery where everyone's energy that gets harvested is ultimately stored within to power up these false gods or these non-physical beings or what is known as the false intervention, okay? They harvest our energy. People always talk about energy harvesting, energy harvesting. Well, where does the energy go? It goes to power up these non-physical planes and they kind of just have a field day with our energy. They've been doing this for a really long time. Um, and then they collect more and more of our energy and they get more and more out of alignment. And you know, it's just really big black hole energy that happens, okay? Um, and speaking of, let's talk about these pyramids that came up really quick. We got Prestige Pyramid and Media Pyramid. Okay, so I, I did a post around the different etheric pyramids. The Media Pyramid is definitely connected to the Mahatma planes. I can confirm that based upon what I saw in, in the astral. I was surprised. I was like, oh, snap. You are casting seduction veils. I say this to you recording on my camera. I'm gonna upload this, okay? Um, this is just, you know, this is something that we're contending with. Um, does this mean I completely like shut down all my socials and all that stuff? Not yet, I don't know. Maybe that will come to a day, I'm not sure. But there is something to be said about the ability to communicate with people and collaborate and gather energy, okay? and reclaim energy, all right? But, you know, something I've been working on is revoking vows, oaths, and agreements with the media pyramid to give my energy to the Mahatma planes. There are these hidden vows, oaths, and agreements 
or cords of attachment to these false gods and the false intervention. So I do have a, a um, meditation on Patreon around reclaiming your chi from false gods. And I'm going to be doing some like more cord um, dissolution stuff too in the times to come because I feel like we could all collectively use that. Uh, so yeah, um, energy harvesting happens through subconscious seduction. We all seduce we all seduce subconsciously, at least in one realm, okay? And it's usually done through our chakras, you know? So you could be a root chakra seducer, a sacral chakra seducer, a solar plexus chakra seducer, a heart chakra seducer, a communication chakra seducer. Uh, what else we got? Um, you could also be like a third eye chakra seducer or a crown chakra seducer. Some master manipulators out there, they got them all on lock okay they can do it all like they can uh they can do everything you know um we have been taught in the false matrix or led to believe that seduction is a form of love like that we need to seduce in order to get what we want in this society it's because that you know we this has been based upon a system of usury this is something we're all deprogramming with okay um i think a big piece of this is becoming okay with the shadow work, knowing that you're not perfect. Like even you being this healer, being such a huge gift to the collective right now, you are in states of harmfulness, okay? We all are because this is what we were trained. We were trained that harmfulness was love. We were trained that seduction is love, but the, what happens in seduction on the unconscious is you, know, you bring somebody in with something that appears to be sweet in the 3D, but in the unconscious, information is being siphoned, okay? Um, energy is being harvested, all right? But we can't see it because there are veils of illusion, and that's because our third eye has been so blocked um, and manipulated. Uh, so that we wouldn't see these things. Some of us have seen this. Some of us have been privy to this, you know, but um, we all need to do our work, our shadow work with unlearning seduction. And a big piece is seeing, well, how have we participated in some of these like pyramid schemes um, in the etheric that have created our society? So you got the prestige pyramid. I visited that one too. Um, I was just like, you know, think about like that whole skull and bones kind of situation. That's kind of, I'm not going to really go more into it, but that's kind of what this whole thing is about. But it's this whole thing around like who's in the in crowd, who's in the out crowd, who gets recognized and honored in our society, who does not. And where do you fit on this pyramid? Okay. Uh, media pyramid is just straight up Mahatma planes, y'all. Okay. This is all going to like the false intervention. Um, and that's a whole program. So false god Hilarion is coming up for somebody. So just Google Hilarion. You know, some at some point on your journey, you may have been called to this ascended master to work with. Um, see if you might have any soul contracts with this being. Tap into your own divination systems to see if this being is truly in alignment with your ascension. And if not, reclaim your energy. We're also getting Temple of Recasting. Temple of recasting is when we sometimes need to uh, bring home parts of ourselves or parts of our consciousness by sending it back to its source. So that part of our consciousness can remember its connection to source, okay? Just like what's happening with the false intervention and like some of these non-physical beings, like we all have our shadow. No one, it has... Um, has their hands clean in this, you know, Jesus came up, Jesus, you know, he got manipulated, you know, he was on the ascension path, he did not ascend, uh, he wasn't able to ascend, because he didn't, he, he died at like 33 years old, um, you, it takes a lot more time to gather the records that you need in order to ascend, um, and he actually got seduced by these false gods, and um, unfortunately anchored in this like crucifixion thought form into the collective, because he got crucified. Now he also resurrected himself, that happened. Um, and so just like there's crucifixion or sacrifice, 
there's also an opportunity to resurrect yourself or to alchemize these things. But um, recasting yourself is a way to, or recasting maybe a part of your consciousness. Sometimes, you know, you need to send these personality entities to be recast out of your field. But you got to also uh, clear the karma first, you know, false gods, you recast them to bring, bring them out of your field. Sometimes it's a part of your particular etheric body or body part that needs to be recast. Um, and then, you know, we also got cellular trauma with that. Okay, so there's some cellular trauma too that needs to be alchemized. Um, but let's end it on like a high note. Um, also, meridians is coming up for some folks. So really focusing in on opening up your meridians. Maybe start with something like acupuncture. You can also do like uh, different forms of like um, at home acupuncture too, or like certain massages you can do with your hands and your feet and your and your um, your head to kind of help open up the meridians um, to to get all that that energy flowing because that's going to help you with the kundalini which we really um which is really supportive to us in our ascension path okay uh monadic soul family so getting to your monad getting to your monadic soul family we all have soul family uh, even if we feel detached from them they're still with us and so a lot of the work that we do clearing the veils of illusion clearing the seduction reclaiming our energy helps us to connect with our monadic soul family and connect with that feeling of interconnection and uh, our higher selves. And, you know, we could all use a little bit more of that. Synergy, bringing all parts of our field in alignment. You know, a lot of times we experience a great deal of fracturing. You know, one part of our consciousness is over here. One part is over there. One part is stuck in this timeline. One part is stuck in that timeline. And that's how the false intervention has worked to kind of keep us in cycles of trauma, fragmentation. But when we synergize, we bring everything back into this now moment in present time. And one thing that supports with synergy is working with the color rays, okay? Reclaiming all of your colors, uh, anything that made you, any parts of the false matrix that made you feel dull or lifeless, reclaiming that energy back. And we can do that through the color rays. So I actually have a playlist on YouTube that is all around reclaiming your colors. So definitely check that out, um, you know, and start with those subliminals and that sort of thing. And I'll be doing some more information about that because that's been really helpful. Um, and it's a great form of protection, you know. Um, each color ray has its own information and own activation. Stomach is coming up for somebody. Um, so, you know, that's kind of like solar plexus type issue. So, so, um, so stomach. And I saved the best for last, y'all. My One of my favorite cards, Abundance Karma. You know, we're always talking about karma like it's a bad thing, okay? But there's also like delayed Abundance Karma that we could be calling in, okay? And um, look, I keep my karma ledger, you know? Whenever I see Abundance Karma, you know, is in my field for a particular thing or a particular narrative, I always make a note of that, you know? And I call it in. Okay, I'd be calling that in, you know, and that's been very helpful on this path. Okay, very, very helpful. So call in your abundance karma and don't think that all karma is bad, y'all. It ain't all, all bad, you know. Sometimes like your karma has been delayed. See, that's why they be ma manipulating the lineages and all that kind of stuff and the, and the Akashics and all that because, you know, they want to take, you know, they, they do this weird thing. But, you know, when you're privy to the game, you can start calling that stuff back, you know. And then you start knowing what your inheritance is. That's that whole thing around ancestral inheritance. You know, take that back, all right? Call in your abundance karma too, all right? That's the cool thing about really connecting with your ancestry is they, they help you to, to, to work with that, all right? So that's the end of that reading. I hope that that was helpful for somebody out there, okay? Um, so that is just like one part of the genetic path cutting path. I am going to be posting some more content. I'm actually coming out with a series just on genetic path cutting. I want to dive deep with this. I'm just, I'm feeling, I'm ready to take the deep dive with genetic path cutting, testing some stuff out on Patreon. And now I'm ready to like expand some things to provide extra layers of support for folks who are on this genetic path cutting path. 
If you want your own personal reading with the genetic path cutting deck, uh, as well as you know a breakdown of certain energies that you might need to transmute, whether it's related to liberating your work life or just your specific ascension path or certain body parts or chakras that you specifically will want to work with, then click the link below and book an ascension reading with me, y'all. Uh, sending y'all so much love, joy, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And always remember that you are the key.